Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. Hello everyone, it's Fafa Gilbert here of Ndu Dubai Fafa and welcome to my Creative African Cooking Channel. The channel you want to be on if you actually want some tasty dishes in your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And today on the menu, I'm actually making this beautiful fura recipe. In Ghana, we actually always call it as fula fula, but it's actually fura. So it might sound like it's tongue twisting and you're saying it incorrectly, but the correct way of saying it is fura. Now, fura is a traditional dish from the northern part of Ghana, and it's actually made out of milled millet and spices. It's also enjoyed in Nigeria as well. Now, millet is alkaline, which means that it's easy to digest. It does hydrate your colon, it's gluten-free, it helps lower and maintain a good cholesterol level because of the presence of vitamin B3. It's also a good source of protein, to mention but just a few. For the list of ingredients, you will need 250 grams of milled millet, 10 grams of guinea peppers, half a teaspoonful of chili powder, one tablespoonful of ginger powder, five cloves, 3 grams of black peppercorns, 60 milliliters of cold water, and an optional salt to taste. Now to a frying pan, I'm actually just going to dry roast my spices. This is just to actually release the oils of the spices so that that infuses into the millet powder perfectly. This is optional, but I think that this is the best way of actually doing it. So just when I think that it's actually about to smoke, I know it's just ready. So this should take you less than about 45 seconds and then you're ready. So to that, I've actually got my coffee grinder that I've actually turned it into my spice grinder and I'm just transferring everything into it and actually blending everything to a smooth powdery form. Now, if you don't have this, you can use your apple you or you can use a stone grinder or use whatever grinder you have available. So yes, once you do that, blend everything and you have this beautiful consistency. Add your blended spices to your millet powder and mix everything together till it's well combined. If you don't have access to a millet powder and you just have the millet seeds itself, soak the millet seeds for about three days so that would naturally ferment it and blend it and you can continue with the procedure just as I'm doing now. So I'm just adding some water to it and I'm just going to mold this. Um, so just enough water, so about 60 milliliters of water to 250 grams of millet powder is just perfect. I don't even know why I was actually trying to use this bengata thing. And, mm, it had to go and I had to actually just try and use my hand, yes. <laughs> so yes. Now if you're using your hand, just make sure that your hands are clean and do so. So I'm just going to mix everything together so I have this perfect dough. And then once I do have that, I'm actually going to mold it into little balls and leave it for about a day or two to allow it to ferment before I actually use it. So mold a handful of the mixture into this beautiful perfect ball until you've actually used all your millet dough. After molding each individual millet dough into that perfect ball shape, cover it with your cling film and leave it in the fridge for about two days. This would allow it to ferment. Now as and when you actually do require it, you can then actually continue with this recipe. So it means you can actually ferment it for up to about three to four days. Alternatively, you can leave it in a warm place for 24 hours and you'd have that slight fermentation and you're perfect. Now as and when you're ready, all you do is actually place your water in a saucepan, bring it to the boil and carefully lower your four bowls into the water. Now you boil this for about 30 minutes and that would cook this through. At this point, do not throw the juice away because that also has the spiciness and the flavors of it, of the fura mixture. So you can actually add that to your blended mixture. Now, there is a disadvantage to this recipe, which is when you leave the fura bowls, um, they do harden up. But of course, if you do have a blender, that is easier because then you can actually blend it. But I'm actually going to come up with another alternative recipe whereby I actually cook it like you would banku. 
and that would give you that soft consistency which is what you readily get um, back home in Ghana um, because it's usually soft and it's easier then for you to actually use your hands to actually mash it. So now I've got my four balls, I'm just adding some milk to it and then some yogurt for that tanginess. Now the advantage of actually adding the yogurt to this mixture is it actually helps balance the flavours because it's tangy and also because of that spiciness due to the introduction of the chilli powder as well as the ginger powder, it balances it perfectly. So I'm adding just a tablespoonful of my brown sugar. I'm not much of a sweet tooth person so I have actually just added the sugar that would work for my taste. You can increase or reduce the sugar up to your preference as well. It doesn't matter. But I've blended everything together and this is it. This is not any other food. I had to actually taste it but this is a thing with Fura once you taste it you can't stop so I place a straw in and by the time I realized I was like one I took a breath get back again and I was like girl looks like I was really hungry and enjoying this at the same time <laughs> anyway I'd leave the link to the transcript including the list of ingredients and measurements for this recipe on my blog in do Dubai for fat.blogspot.com do check it out and I'm also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as in Dubai Fafa. I hope you are inspired to try the recipe and I have given you yet again another reason to actually subscribe to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button now. Until next time, take care of you, be you, be nice, be beautiful, don't change for anybody and I love you.